All right, in this video, I want to use the parable of the ten virgins to try to motivate you to get closer to God, to be cleansed. Now, I know in my vi videos, I'm usually getting into saved by grace through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. And I get into how you're saved simply by believing. But I figured I need to do something to encourage you to just do more than that. Because all things are possible with God. So if you really desired, you can get really close to God. And be cleansed in this life. And I want to encourage you to do that. I know some Christians don't like that. They think it's like, oh, you're being judgmental or something, and yada, yada, yada. And it's far from that. It's like, okay, yeah, you're saved, but if you're okay with that, you're okay with that. Me, I want to get closer to God. I want to be closer to Jesus. I don't want to just be like, oh, yeah, thanks for the salvation, and that's that. No. I, he gave his earthly life for me. I want to give my earthly life for him. <clears throat> so anyway, let's get into this. In Matthew 25, it's right after we read about something that appears to be the rapture. Then we come to chapter 25 and we read about the ten virgins. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your, oil, <coughs> of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, there's a few things to take from this. We got ten virgins. Who are the wise? Who are the foolish? I mean, they are all virgins, right? So they're all worshiping the same God. That's what it would seem like. But only five of them are wise and have oil, and they're taken into the marriage, which would be the marriage supper, which sounds like the rapture. And it says, and the door was shut after they're taken in. And that's what we read in Revelation chapter 4. The first couple of verses there talks about a door being opened, the same door that seems to be opened to the Church of Philadelphia, and they are taken up, but the other virgins, they're not taken up. And the interesting separation here seems to be the oil, because it says the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, but it says the foolish took no oil. So they had no oil. Oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit because they would anoint people with oil and Jesus is anointed by the Holy Spirit. That oil represents the, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And when we look here at Ephesians chapter 1 at verse 13, when talking about Christ, it says, 
in whom ye also trusted, that after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So as soon as you believed in Jesus, that he is the Son of the living God, the Messiah, that he died and rose again, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That is a wise virgin. To be unwise, you have no oil. So you would probably be someone that is uh, works-based, works-based for salvation, whether it's to, you have to do works to earn your salvation, do works to prove your salvation, do works to keep your salvation. So you're basically a lordship salvationist. And that's why there's no oil. You're relying on yourself and not with, on God. Now, continuing with this, I want to bring up some other things to really, really shake you a little bit. Because <coughs> I don't want to, I don't want you to be complacent. I don't, I don't want you to be lukewarm. I want you to be on fire. So that's what I'm going to get into here. I don't want this to be, oh, well, I believe on Jesus, I'm saved, and that's that. Is it? Is that it? Well, let's go over here to John chapter 15. It says, now I'm going to jump from here to other places. So I'm going to be jumping back and forth. Just a heads up on that. It says here, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. All right, now the first thing here, he says that every branch in him that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So what do you think that means? I mean, if you're in him, he takes it away. What do you think that means? Now, I know he's talking to the Jews here. But I'm going to show you how this also connects to the church. So the first thing I want to bring up is right here. Ephesians chapter 5, it says at verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And we saw right here, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you, spoken unto you. And then in John 6, verse 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh part of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So from all this, we can take that getting into the actual Bible, the Word, is what's going to actually clean us up. So if we actually want to be closer to Jesus, to abide in Jesus, and to Jesus to abide in us, we need to get into the Bible. We need to get to the Word of God. And that means, you know, reading it. It means studying it. It means memorizing it. You mean listening to audio tapes of it. It can be listening to sermons about it, teachings about it. Just whatever you can, the more you're in it, the more you're in Jesus, the more Jesus is in you. And the more it cleanses you, it cleanses the inside. It cleanses the spirit, the soul. And strengthens the soul to overcome the flesh. And that's what I want to encourage you to do here. Uh, so, coming back over here, it says, Abide in me, and I in you. And it's right after he talks about the word cleanses you, right? And then we saw the connection to the word over here. It, it cleanses you, and over here, it is spirit and life. And that's how you abide in him. As the branch cannot bear fruit itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. 
I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Another key point here. The fruit that we bring forth is not of ourselves. If we're trying to bring it forth of ourselves, it's going to be corrupted. It's going to be crap. It's going to be tainted. It's going to be selfish. It's not good. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. So if we're trying to bring this forth of ourselves, it's basically we're trying to prove ourselves to God, prove ourselves to our fellow man, prove ourselves to ourselves, and it's just going to be garbage. We need to abide in Jesus and Jesus in us, and that's when the fruit comes forth. Because you see this fruit over here? This is the fruit of the Spirit. And you can't produce this on your own. God produces this through you if you abide in him, which is these, which he, what it, exactly what he's saying in John chapter 15. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Was there nine here? Nine fruits? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine fruits of the Spirit here. And I like what it says afterwards. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So it talks about fruit of the Spirit and just putting to death the flesh. The way you could see it is that your spirit is the tree. And you need to bury your flesh so that it can be soil and feed the roots of your spirit to produce this kind of fruit. That's how you can see this here. Because you cannot produce this fruit on your own. It only comes from the Spirit. And you're having trouble with these kind of things. Like you don't have joy. You don't have peace. Love. You lack patience and gentleness. Faith and meekness and temperance. You need to get into the Word. I know someone was telling me. Oh. At one point, I've heard it from different people, but they say, oh, I don't, I don't so much get into the Word, you know, I go by the Spirit. But you're supposed to test the spirits by the Word. Because you don't know who or what you're following. Because there's ways that seems right unto a man, but it actually leads to destruction. Right? And we see here, Jesus says that his words, they are spirit and they are life. The Bible is the spirit here. We get into this. We're partaking of the spirit of God here by getting into the word. But coming back over here. He says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. You keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Now here's a creepy thing here. If a man doesn't abide in Jesus, doesn't bring forth fruit, cast away into the fire. This ties into something else that I'm going to get into momentarily here. But first, I wanted to read this next thing too. Because I know a lot of people talk about keeping Jesus' commandments if you love him. And this is what he says his commandment is, that we love one another. As, that he, as he has loved us. He says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what 
his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whosoever ye shall, whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. That's what we're commanded by Jesus to do is to love. Love others as he loves them. And he wants us to bear much fruit. And that's this right here. And if you put the flesh on the cross there, you'll be able to actually produce a lot more fruit. I want to show you some other connections to this right here. Let's go to, it also ties to right here as well, where Jesus tells these five foolish versions. He says, I don't even know you. So let's get into who they are as well. We go to, whoops, we're already in Matthew, so let's go to chapter 7 because this has to do with the fruit and the virgins here it talks about beware of false prophets you know them by their fruits a good tree brings forth good fruit and can't bring forth evil fruit right and then it says every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is cast into the fire same connection to what we read over here in John 15. Interesting thing here is that it goes on to say, Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we were reading about the ten virgins. Is it says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto ten virgins where five were wise and five were foolish, so only five enter and the other five don't. Right? He says, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And when we go to John, I think it's chapter 5, or oh, it might be right here. Yeah, it's right here. We see that the work of God right here is to believe on him whom he hath sent. And then right here, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son of the Son and believeth on him may, be, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So that is the will and the work of God is to believe on the Son. And over here, it says, not everyone will enter the kingdom of heaven except whoever does the will. So there's people who call themselves Christians, but they don't really believe on Jesus. Because he says, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and then in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And that's exactly what we read in Matthew 25 about the ten virgins. The five foolish, he says, I don't even know you. So these are calling Jesus Lord, Lord. And they might be doing these many wonderful works. There's people who are uh, gung-ho about keeping the law and the Sabbath. And that's exactly what they would be saying here. Is like, Lord, Lord, haven't we kept your Sabbath and kept your law and done all the all these other wonderful works in your name he's going to go oh, I, I never knew you depart from me that ye that work iniquity and you may be saying how do they work iniquity when they're trying to keep the law because they don't keep the law you see the reason why these people work iniquity is not because they sin but because they don't believe on Jesus that's the only reason why you ever fail and why you don't go to heaven is because you don't believe on Jesus. You're relying on your own righteousness. You're relying on your own works. Like these people here, they're doing great things in the name of Jesus, prophesying, casting out devils, and wonderful works. 
but he's saying, I don't even know you. You work iniquity. How they work iniquity? Because their sins aren't forgiven because they don't believe on him. They're believing on their own works. It's the same thing if you're trying to keep the law and you go to Jesus like, yeah, I'm keeping your Sabbath. I'm keeping your law. He's going to go, okay, well, I don't know you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why? Because you still sin. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is sinless. So unless you're sinless, you can't rely on your works. You can't go to, hey, look, I was keeping the Sabbath and I was keeping your law. And you say that to Jesus and he's going to look and be like, well, look at this. Oh, you were having these thoughts? Yeah, you, you really dwelt on this thought for a while over here. Oh, these things you said? Whoa. Yeah, that those things you said, that's not keeping the law here. Oh, these, these things that you did? Yep, that was not keeping the law. Oh, you didn't do this. Like you should have been you should have helped out that guy or that lady there or that child. Yeah, you you didn't you didn't lend that helping hand right there. You're not going to be perfect. So you your iniquity is going to remain. You're not these people aren't cleansed. It's the same thing real quick going to chapter 5. Where we see here that the law stands, but it says whoever breaks one of the least and teaches men so, he's going to be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But what we just read is those other people in chapter 7 aren't even entered. But there's people who break the commandments that are in the kingdom. So why isn't their iniquity put onto them? Well, that's what we're going to read here. It says... Except your righteousness it shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So to enter, your righteousness has to exceed that of the religious leaders. The only way for that to happen is to have Jesus give you his righteousness. Therefore, you enter the kingdom by faith, even though you teach to break the commandments, and you break the commandments. You still have faith in Jesus, so your iniquity is cleansed. It's removed. So anyway, <clears throat> let's uh, continue on with uh, these other things. In Romans chapter 11, it talks about uh, Israel and how because of unbelief, they were broken off. And we were grafted in. And then it talks about if they're grafted back in, it'd be life from the dead. Right? And then it says, And if some of the branches were broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Not by your works, by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity, severity of God on them which fell. Severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou shalt be cut off. And if they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree. So here it's talking about that you yourself can be cut off. And we get this reference of being cut off and being cast into the fire. Is that what happens? I'm not sure. It seems like that can happen because of something like this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, it says, 
to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So we see here that your flesh might be broken off and given off to destruction, but your spirit will be saved. Because once you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. It also says over here in Ephesians chapter 4, not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed on to the day of redemption. Because you can grieve that Holy Spirit because it's going to be with you, and you can still use your own free will to do what you want, such as sin. So you got to be careful there. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit because then it could just cast you off to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Your, you know, your spirit will still be saved, but your flesh ain't going to have a fun time. So, without all that being said, I don't know how well of a job I did there. Motivate you to be closer to Jesus, to abide in Jesus by getting into the Word more, studying it, reading it, memorizing it. But you should you should definitely do that, definitely do that, so that you you can be sure that. You're one of the wise virgins over here. And be real sure that you're not one of the foolish ones. And be sure that you're not going to be broken off. That your soul, your spirit might be saved, but your your flesh ain't. So that's something else you might want to, to think about there. God's patient, but he's also just. And he's not going to be mocked. And if he's sealed with you, though he loves you, he's not going to want to live in sin. Especially sin that you're not even fighting against, that you're just indulging in. So, yeah. I guess that is that. Thanks for watching and take care.